we, ha- we, we got to chapter 2. It was a miracle. What, what verse are we in? Well, I'm just looking to see. We're in verse 3. Is that right? Yes. We did verse 2. We're in verse 3. So, you know, she's had these kids. Yisrael. Lo ami. Lo ruchama. But now we have this um, redemption that's happening and beginning depending upon what book you're, what, if you're in English or Hebrew, but um, the people are going to come back together and great will be the day of Jezreel. And so Imru, what kind of a, the Imru, Amen. So what is it? It is a command form. Say, all y'all say, Le'achechem, your brothers, Ami. You are my people. Okay, it's a redemption of the low Ami. Say to the brothers, you are my people. And to the achotechem, so it's achot, sisters, ruchama. It's the uh-huh, mercy. You are, uh, so that's the redemption of the, um, of the la ruchama. Okay, so this is a nice thing. All right, verse four. Reeve, so you have that revu. Now, if you look at the revu, both Rebus, you see where the trope mark is, where the changing mark is. The first one uh, is a little uh, less than sign under the resh, and the second one is two dots over the resh. So the accent's on the first syllable, Revu. Revu, the trope mark tells you where it is. So what is Reeve? All right, we're going to talk about it now. Rashid, Kaf, Va. Uh, su esrim esrim how much is esrim so uh so who's quarreling with who who's quarreling the shepherds of gerar and the shepherds of yitzchak okay so they're having a an argument um, i think we could call it strife and so they have several of these and each time they name the well something different but it's never named for the reed it's always named for the other arguing word so here they're going to name it Esek, why ki hit asku, because they strove with them or they quarreled with them. Okay? All right. Let's look at uh, Bamidbar, Kaf, Ka, Su, Shalosh Esre, Shalosh Esre, how many? What is me? Water. What form is it? Smichut, Mayim, Me. Okay? So it's very, it looks very short, but it's the same, it's formed as every other smichu. We drop the mem sofit, we change the vowel. Me, miriva. So this is the name of the place, right? And what happened there? They reaped, right? They had a, they had a, a discussion, a quarrel, a what? A contention with Yahweh. But in the end, he was sanctified in them. All right, one more. Mizmor, Lamed He, Pasuk Harishon, Riva. So this is more in the case of pleading, a, pleading the case, pleading a cause. David's asking God to plead on his behalf. Plead my case. And what is Lachom? You know Lachom? You, know, you do. You know where this comes from. It. No, it's not Lechem. And they're related. Oh, no, now we're in trouble. It's a very short introduction okay lechem what is lechem good but this is not anything look these are parallel riva yirivai lachom lachmai so it's not please bread my bread right and bread my fish cakes right <laughs> what is what is you know a word you know a word that has this in the middle huh milchama what is milchama these things are related you need bread in a you war? You're not really fighting over bread. What are you fighting over? The land. That, that's right. Without the land, you have no bread. Okay? So he's saying, plead my cause, fight my fight. Okay? And we need to do that. You know? Sometimes we just feel so full of ourselves. We think, well, I'm going to go out there and fight this fight. Forget about it. <laughs> Let God fight your fight. Right? He is my defense. Okay, all right, so we're still in the first word. 
of verse 4. The imchem. So that's a little bit tricky there. Can you figure out all the parts of that? The imchem. What does it look like? With y'all's mother. We're back in Hosea 2.4. We didn't get very far. So uh, this is a, the case. It says, you need to bring a case against your mother, right? Why do they need to bring a case against the mother? It's no good. Even, well, it's not only the names, but even if, um, even if we had this nice positive thing, you know, between the uh, chapters here, because the chapters are different, but even though we have, oh, yes, there's going to be this great restoration, but we're still in the problem. The problem is that she's a prostitute, okay? Bring a case against your mother. Why? Ki, he, lo, ishti, my wife. She is not my woman not behaving like a wife. Uh-huh. Va'anochi lo isha. Her husband. Okay? So ish, this isha, which is a woman, has no yet. But this isha, that's her husband. Okay? It has the yud, so it has to be the man, whatever else is happening. We have one other problem. What's the other problem that we get confused on? There's an isha. Fire. Fire offering. Okay, very confusing. What a language. So, and I'm not her husband. The taser, we talked about sur, you could turn away from. She needs to. This is like, she should do this. Zenuneha, we talked about zana, her prostitutions. Mipaneha, from, from her face. She needs to turn her face away. From her, from her harlotry. Now the next word is just an amazing word, na afu feha. So it's another ha, another thing that she's doing. It's in parallel with the zununeha. So let's go to shemot kaf, and we will see what's in, what is in shemot kaf. The ten sayings. Okay. Now you're um. Your numberings for the verses in Exodus 20. I only have one set of numberings. Does anybody with a Hebrew Bible? Because some of them have different sets of numberings. So in my Bible, it's within verse 13. But this is what happened. So people who have Samechs have nice Samechs. Let me see. What have you got here? It's 14. So this is, this is a thing. This is a thing. When you're looking at the second half of those sayings, some of them are just two words, okay? Some of them are just two words. So you have, do not murder, lo tirtzach. Uh, do not commit adultery, lo af. And that's what we're looking at then now. So some people, some people might have it in verse 14. Now why, why are there different numbering? New turn off, what's, it's 14. Okay, so this is why this happens. Some, uh, and some books have both numbering, so that's, I don't know if that's helpful or not, really. But um, there are some rabbis that say, well, two words is not enough to make a verse. So they strung some of them together, and, and so all the verses after that are differently numbered because of that, okay? So in some of the Bibles, you see, we have, we have, um, we have three commandments. We have do not murder, do not commit adultery, Oh no, we have three, four. Don't steal, and don't um, don't bear a false witness. And that's all verse 13 in some Bibles. But the other one is 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, so that's why we have different ones. So this na'afufeha, uh, uh, we see this sometimes in the dub, the doubling of the final consonant. This is a noun, and it's her. Adulteries. We'll look at one more example. Mishle Lamin, Asuk Esrim. And there's many, many things in Proverbs about the adulterous woman. We know it. Surely. Derech, the way. Isha. Uh huh. Mina Efet. So, what form is this? Mina Efet. It's a noun form, it's a participle form. What binyan is it? Not Pa'al because it's got a mem. It's P-L, okay, but it's a participle form. You were right, you did not speak loudly enough. Okay, Achla, Ochel, she ate. 
Machata. So Machat, huh? She erased. She erased her mouth. She wipes her mouth. <laughs> P. Piha, her mouth. The Amra, Omer. Lo. Faalti. So look at the Faalti, right? It's got the letters of the names of the binyan, right? Paal, Piel. So why do we use this verb? What is this? To do, to work. I have not actioned. I have not done. Aven. Aven is a kind of sin, iniquity. She said, I didn't do nothing. That's like your little kid, right? He's got the cookie crumbs all over his face. And you made me. <laughs> so she needs to turn, turn from her, uh, turn away, turn away her face from her whoredom and from, and, and her, um, and her harlotries, me, vain, what's this vein? Between, I'm sorry, yes, Hosea, Shadeha. So what is this, Shadeha? Okay, so this is a very funny group of words. Here it means breast. So one of the ways that you can look at the title, El Shaddai, it's always translated as Almighty, but it's the one who provides everything, okay? And I particularly like this in the sense that um, when Moses is first talked to God, he says, you know, who am I going to say? He sent me. And he says, well, you just tell him that he has sent you, and blah, blah, blah. He says, because the forefathers didn't know my name, Yehovah, they knew me as El Shaddai. Well, it's ridiculous because in Genesis, you see Yehovah all the time. His name is always there, and they're calling on his name, even from the third generation. So, but they knew him as El Shaddai. What happens in the Exodus and forward with the plagues and the release from Egypt is a qualitatively different act than what happens with the forefathers in Genesis, right? Because what happens in Genesis, God provides for all their stuff. He gets them out of all their troubles, and he's with them, and he goes to the war, and, you know, he saves everybody's life, and he saves Joseph, and blah, blah, blah. Right, and they're blessed and blessed and blessed. But it's not like setting an entire nation of a million people free and splitting the Red Sea. I mean, it's a whole quality, qualitatively different thing. So that's, I think, what that what the implication of that verse is, that they didn't really know me in the fullness of what I'm going to be getting to show you now. They knew me in the sense of providing, as, uh, as having all the nourishment that they needed. Okay? So let's see um, in Bereshit, uh, Mem Tet. Bereshit Mem Tet. Ha Suk Esrim Vechamesh. Me'el Avicha, from God Avicha, your father, the Ezrecha, what is the root there? Uh-huh, Azar, 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 help, we'll help you. Ve'et Shaddai, so this is here, it's translated as Almighty. Uh-huh, I hope you will know that. Uh-huh, Birchot Shemayim. The blessings of heaven, right? May all birchot to home, above. No, where's the where's the thing? May all the may all goes with the shemayim. The blessings of heaven over, and the blessings of the deep. Rovets it. What? Is, it's crouching. Underneath. Did you know that the ocean is crouching? Wow, that's so interesting. So let's see what we are talking about. I was never expecting to see it. Okay, this is now here in this verse is talking about the action of the tahom, the action of the deep. Okay, because it's birchot, the blessings tahom, the deep rovets a tachet, which is underneath. So rovets uh, is usually the action of an animal, uh, which is either it, it comes from uh, from uh, arba from Rava to the four, right? The animal's laying, the idea is the animal's splayed out or on fours. So either it's totally resting and eating peaceably, or sometimes it's crouching, getting ready to stride. Now, if you're talking about the ocean, which do you think is more? The underneath, the bottom of the ocean. You think it's resting? The sand? Is it the sand underneath or the tsunami? How about the riptide? Where is that? Is that up or below? It's underneath, right? So, um, 
I'll just, uh, as a complete uh, side note, I want you to think, if you're listening to the news, how many times you hear the word deep. You got your deep state. You got your deep learning. You got uh, deep learning, yeah? Well, that's because you're not paying to the artificial intelligence uh, uh, articles, okay? There's uh, uh, deep thinking, deep programming. There's all kind of deep. Just keep your eye on the deep, okay? Deep is, I think this deep is, is uh, fixing to do something. But this is for Joseph. This is Joseph's blessing. He's going to receive the blessing of the sky above, the blessing of what's ever happening in the ocean underneath, and two other blessings, a, a blessing of Shaddaim, which in this case are the breasts, and the Rechem, and you know the Rechem. So this is all a blessing of fruitfulness. Joseph, it starts off, right? Joseph is a fruitful bough, right? And what is his son's name who inherits from him? Ephraim, and what does that mean? Doubly fruitful, okay? All right, so that's a good Shaddai right there. Let's go to Yeshayahu Samech, Pasuk Shesh Esre. So this is a verb, Yanak. Tinok, Maza Tinok, a baby. This is to nurse. He's the nurser. You will nurse what? Milk. Chalav is milk. Of what? You will nurse the milk from the nations. This is very obscure. And this is the breast of the Malachim kings. Tina Ki is the same nurse. There's two nurses there. So, you know, mine says drink the milk and the milk. <laughs> but it, and yeah, or, yeah, to milk like milking a cow, they make it into a bread. The Yada'at, Yada, Yadea, both. And you will know what? Ani, Moshiach, Moshiach. Your savior, good. Of the goalech, what's a goel? Is it redeemer? Avir. I don't know. Have we ever had this word avir? It means great. So I am your mighty redeemer. I am your great redeemer. I'm on the wrong page. Uh, who? Yaakov. I am your redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. But whatever does this mean? To drink the breast of kings, the milk of kings. What does that mean? Or the nation. What is that? It's nourishment. Okay. The best. Yes. That's a good idea. Okay. But it's not literal. Okay. <laughs> this is poetic language. Okay. So we know that. All right. So, but we see here, this is the breast. Now, well, would it be? Oh, it's clearly that it's from the king. Whatever you're getting, it's from the king. Who is the king? Yes. You have the best thing from kings. All right, divarim. Now, there's a whole totally different word that's associated with this root, and that is devil or demon. Divarim, divarim, lamit bet, pasuk shva esrei, shva esrei. All right, yizbechu. What is zevach, mizbeach, sacrifice, right? And who are they sacrificing to you? The demons, lo, not, eloha, okay? Eloha is, I want to say it's used 39 times. That just comes in my mind. I don't know why, okay? So it refers to God. It's a singular of Elohim, okay? So because of the nature of what he's talking about, we know it's not our Elohim. He didn't sacrifice to our Elohim. He's sacrificing to demons. Elohim, lo, not Yada'um. It's yada, it's yada'u. Mm. No. They did not know what's the mm at the end. That. Okay. They're sacrificing to God, so they didn't know. Okay. Chadashim. What is chadash? New. Aha mikaro. From, from, from nearby. They're new ones. New, new gods come in all the time, right? What's the latest thing on the God menu? All right, there's always new gods coming on the scene. All right. Lo, last piece, lo, sa'arum. They did not fear them. Who did they not fear? Avotechem. No, avot. Their fathers, okay? 
All right, they don't, they have no respect for their fathers who are, you know, serving Elohim, the real God, and so they get off uh, picking up the the newest, the newest, the best, latest thing. Okay, it's a bit it's it's a bit confusing. I agree. <laughs> Hirsch, Hirsch, Rabbi Hirsch, who did all this initial gathering of roots and things, he puts down this one to Shaddad and this one to Shaddad, okay? And also, you see also Shud, also. So you can see that there is a vague uh, cognitive thing of Sadeh here. So the idea of being fruitful. Okay, so it's a little bit more with being fruitful. It's only used, I think, four, four out of, you know, however many times it is, a bunch of times. Usually it means shaken. But because of the El Shaddai, we know that it ha can have a positive meaning. So, listen, if there are other spirits that are not God, they are demons. Okay, there, there's not anything else going around. Uh, that's right. Anything else available? All right, we're going to read verse 5. Less. Okay, can you pull the root out of the next word? Pashut, Pashat. Okay, so we, when we say Pashat, we're talking about the Pashat. That's the plain meaning of the word. But it comes from something more uh, tangible than that. So we will go to Bereshit, Lamed Zion, and we'll find out what happens when you are Pashatted. So what Mike said, pashut, pashut in the uh, in modern Hebrew means simple. This is a bad, bad thing happening here to Mr. Joseph. Okay, remember we talked about the katonet pasim. What is the katonet pasim? The coat with the stripes on it, right? What happened to him? <laughs> okay, you know, ka'asher ba Yosef el echiv. Achiv, he came to his brothers, and what did they do? They pashuted him. They stripped him. So this is the tangible meaning of pashu. What is simple is <coughs> what you were wearing the day you were born. That was simple. There was no book, right? All right, let's see what else. Uh, Bamidbar, uh, Ka, Pasuk, Esrim, Veshesh. Esrim, Veshesh. So what's happening here? Stripping, why? Why? Because he's going to die, right? Wearing the clothing to Eleazar, his son, okay? So it's, his clothes are stripped off him, and they are labash, they're on Eleazar, his son, and then ye, what is the Yeaseh? He's gathered, okay? I don't know why they say that, to be gathered to your fathers, it's some kind of euphemism for dying. All right, and he died there. Okay, Shmuel Aleph, Yud Chet, Yud Chet, Pasu Arba. Okay, somebody else is going to lose their clothes. Yud Pashet, what binyan is it? Hit Pa'el, yay. So in this case, he's doing it for himself. Who is Yehonatan? Jonathan, okay. And he took off his me'il. His jacket? Probably not. So, no, I. His outer garment. Okay? Uh, his robe. Let's say his robe. Asher Allah, which was on him. Vayidnehu. And he gave it to David. They're making a covenant. Okay? Part of the deal of covenants is that you trade clothes. You give somebody your clothes as part of your covenant. Okay. Have you made a covenant with God? You have. No, what did you get? You got new garments. What do you get? Breastplate of righteousness, helmet of salvation, shoes of God with the A white row, garments of praise, right? Okay. All right, now he's going to give him some other things. His madav, uh, which is his armor, his charbo, his harev, his, his sword, his keshet, his bow, we've already talked about, and his chagor. You know what a chagor is? A belt. Yes, we had them a long time ago in Genesis, where they made themselves belts out of uh, fig leaves. OK, 
Okay, it's the same word there. That was okay, all right. So this is uh, Jonathan. Back to Hosea. Quickly, quickly, we're going to finish this verse. We know almost all the words. He says, if she doesn't return, I'm going to strip her. Our room. Remember our room from Genesis? Naked. Okay, I'm going to strip her naked. Oh, a whole other word we don't know. We're going to do it. Hitzak tiha, which is yatsak. The word is yatsak. It's the same root as hatsaka, which is a, in modern Hebrew, it's a presentation. We're going to look up two things. Bereshit lamed, pasuk shloshim b'chamesh. Bereshit lamed. Oh, this is a good one. No, no, it's in this story. It's in this story. Uh, oh, it's in 38. So, v'yatseg et hamaklot. He set up the sticks. Remember, he peeled the sticks and he set them up. This is the story of his uh, breeding program. So this is Yetzag. He set up the sticks. So he put them in place. All right, one more. Shoftim vav, shloshim v'sheva. As you said, this is Gideon, right? And he's setting something up. Uh-huh. Matzik. What is he setting up? Setting up the fleece. Okay, he's putting it in position. So this is the meaning of yatsag, to, to set up, to put in position. Right. If I put it here and only the tall, and the tall, the tall is the dew, if the tall is only on that, and, uh, and all the land is dry, then I will know that it will be as you have spoken. Okay, Hosea 2, 5, we're gonna finish the verse. If she doesn't turn away, lest, she better turn away, lest I strip her naked and I set her up. I'm going to put her in the position. Kayom, like the day he valda. Can you see where that comes from? Yeah, yeah. so in the day she was what? Naked. The day she was born. It's her birthday suit, okay? Visam tiha, sam. I will also put her, I will set her. Ka midbar. Not in the wilderness, like the wilderness, vashatiha, is be a drinking ka'eres si'a, like a dry land. Okay, there will be no drinking. Vahamitiha, oh, what's that? What's the root there? Men, I mean, he's going to kill her, but sama, sama is thirst. It's very common. You should all know that all those uh, people that did the, what was the name of the starts with P. Pimsler. Yeah, but the first thing you learn is, I'm thirsty. Let's go get beer. So in the, in, in the modern Hebrew, in the adjective, same, smeya, smeim, smeo, thirsty. Okay, she, I will kill her of thirst. Okay, if she does, this is serious. I'm going to strip her naked. She's going to be like out in the wilderness. There's another story about a baby out in the wilderness. Where do we find that? God, huh? Is Ezekiel, and God comes and rescues that. He washes her, and um, this, uh, he dresses her beautifully. This is the opposite of that. Okay, um, I'm going to make her like that day that she was born naked, and nobody's going to care for her. She'll be dying of thirst. She better turn around. Okay, chalas, enough and finished.